Now I've just defined, maybe in a not so clear way, how I can, uh, in a previous video, I just defined how I can define a vector between two points. So if I've got some point A in the Cartesian coordinates and I've got another point B, I can define a vector that joins those two points and I call that vector AB, and I can say that it's the same thing as saying vector B plus negative A. We did that geometrically here. So that's vector B plus negative A. That's the vector that joins the point O, the O origin, and the point B. That's called vector B, and then this one right here. So because of this, then, I can find a vector between those two points. But maybe more useful than that is finding the distance between two points. And that's going to be really easy, then. We're going to say the distance between two points is just the length of the vector. And remember, length means magnitude. We learned this before in another video as well, right? That's the magnitude of the vector AB. So that means then, I can state then, that the distance between them is going to be this. This is the distance. This is how we write it. Remember, that's how we do a magnitude. So this is how we actually define two different, uh, well, we defined the vector between the two points, so that's how we find the distance. The distance is equal to the magnitude, or the length, of that vector AB. So let's maybe take a look at how to do it practically, because it may look more complicated than it seems, uh, geometrically, but mathematically speaking, hopefully you'll see this is, pretty, this is pretty straightforward. Once you've done a few of these examples, you'll see it's not nearly as bad as it seems. So let's try it out. We've got point P is at coordinates is negative 1 and 2. This is not a vector, this is coordinates. And this is point Q, which is at 3, 1. So the question is, find the vector P, Q. We want to first define that vector. So let's see about how to do this. Uh, maybe it helps to draw it. So I'm going to try to draw um, this vector, you know, let's try to actually draw what's going on here. So maybe I can draw my coordinate system. Here we go. I need it to be black. Sure. There we go. There we go. And I'm going to, of course, label the x and y axes. All right, so I want to label this. So this one here is point P is at negative 1 and 2. So let's maybe draw that like this. This is at negative 1 and plus 2. So negative 1 plus 2, there's P. All right. Now we also have Q, but that's at... 1, 2, 3. So Q is at 1, 2, 3, and 1. So there's there's Q. All right? There we go. We've got our two points. Now, those two points may not be very helpful, so maybe instead I should draw a vector joining them. I'm going to draw a vector going from 0 to, you know, from the origin. I know that sounds really dumb, but I that's how I always remember it. That's how I go from the origin. The origin to this point, that's this. And that vector can be called, well, it can be called a couple things, right? It can be called OP. So that, I mean, I could actually define it that way. I could actually say that. In fact, maybe I will. I'll, say, I'll define the vector OP is just going from, uh, let's see, you got to go left by 1. So in other words, negative 1 and 2. So now I can actually define it now like this. This is a real vector now like this. That's vector OP. And then I can also define vector OQ. You know, to get from O to Q, I can define that vector as this one. There you go. So that goes to the right by 3 and up by 1. So I say that right by 3, whoops. So right by 3, that's the x value, remember? And this is up by 1. Or if you want, you can always take uh, coordinates and make a vector from the origin. That's really important. Only a vector from the origin can you do this. Take these coordinates and write them as a column. And now you have a vector, a position vector that defines it from the origin. But that means I can even go a step further, and I can actually define that as P. So I can actually say that P is the same thing. So I can, I can draw a lowercase vector if I want. I can actually call it P. And I can say that's negative 1 and 2. That's commonly what we draw. And this one right here could be a little vector, like a little lowercase q. That's usually the notation we use. The capitals are used for points, and the lowercase are used for vectors. OK, fine. It doesn't really matter how I want to call them. What does this do for me? Well, if you remember what we talked about before, here, this definition of how to do it, to get from A to B, you have to do B plus negative A. In other words, to get from P to Q, you got to do Q plus negative P. Well, that I know how to do. Oops, i got to put the vector signs here. 
So that means I can do this totally, right? I can do this is 3, 1 plus negative p. Well, negative p just means I have to change the sign of all of them. So the negative 1 is going to become a plus 1, and a 2 that's positive becomes a negative 2. And I just add those up. So 3 plus 1 is 4. Uh, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. This should be my answer. This should be my vector that goes from p to q. And let's see if that really makes sense. What I like about this, because it's geometric, because I've drawn it, I want to draw a vector that goes from p to q. That means there should exist, and I should be able to draw a line from p to q here, some arrow. And if you think about it, what this tells me is to get from here to here, I've got to go right by 4 and down by 1. Let's see if that really works. From this, this is, I'm already at negative 1 here. I go right by 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Yep, that's where I am. And I was up at 2. I got to go down by 1. Yep, that works. So the beauty of this is that this actually works. This is vector PQ. So again, if you want to do it really, really quickly then to get from some point to another point, um, if they're defined like this, all you have to do, I just showed you the really detailed full explanation. But what you can do to save time is say, all right, fine, I'm going to make myself a vector P that's going to be defined as just this thing as a column. Boom. This thing as a column. Boom. If I want to go from P to Q, what I really remember is do Q plus negative P. In other words, Q minus P. In other words, start at the end and go to the first. In other words, end minus first. Or just remember that, you know, just do opposites. In order to get here, it's kind of like you have to go backwards. You've got to start with the Q values and subtract the P's. Or you just remember this equation. Otherwise, or either way, here you go, you can get it. And now the last part, calculate the length, in other words, the magnitude of PQ. Um, you just have to remember that equation. Remember the equation for the magnitude, whoops, the magnitude of a vector. Let's maybe do it in green, let's see. So the magnitude of vector v in general is given by, if this is, if it's given by v1, v2, v3, it's going to be square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared plus v3 squared. Whoops, not cubed, but squared. There we go. So if I'm going to use that, that means if I want pq, it's going to be really simple then, hopefully. Uh, the length of this vector is going to be just the square root of, let's see, just 4 squared plus negative 1 squared. Well, that's going to be square, uh, 4 squared is 16. Negative 1 times negative 1 is still just positive 1. I want to take the square root, so that gives me square root of 17. That's the exact answer. That's how easy this is. Okay, so you can, you can actually work with all sorts of nasty stuff. Or you could have actually, of course, just used Pythagoras theorem and actually done it. I mean, you could have actually just taken this vector right here and just sort of moved it over here. And you say, oh, look at that. It goes over by 3. I mean, if you look at this right here, you can actually take a look. Sorry, it goes over by 4, and it goes down by 1. So you could sort of make a little triangle like this and say, all right, something that goes to the right by 4, and it goes down by 1, what is its length here, you know? What is that value? And it turns out you could do that. It's the same thing here. You use a Pythagoras theorem because it's a right angle triangle. And you can say then that this squared equals this squared plus this squared. And then, hey, look at that. You get the same answer. So there's lots of different ways of getting at the right answer. I like the geometry part. If it's 2D, I sometimes like to draw it. It's simpler. But if it's 3D, it's no problem. You could have done this in three dimensions, right? You just add the extra third dimension. I wouldn't really draw it then. I would just say, forget that. I'm not going to draw it. I would just move along, move along, and I'd be fine. Right? I'm sure it would be just fine. So I hope that that helps you and that makes some sense for you.